Hi, this is Shane R. Monroe from Review Lagoon. As an early adopter of Google+, I've been asked questions over and over again about what Google+, Plus is, how it works, and how can they protect their privacy while using Google+. Plus. Today we're going to go over all of those things, and hopefully by the time we're done here, you'll have a better understanding what Google+, Plus is, and why you should use it. First of all, we've got my son's handy dandy marker board back here, and it's a little dirty, but you know, we'll get by, right? So, what is Google+, Plus? it's a social networking service, right? is to share information amongst groups of people. But Google Plus is a little bit different. I think this is what throws people. Once you get to Google Plus, the first thing you need to do is bring people into your group. Now, in other networking services, you have things like friends and followers. Well, not exactly the same way here. In Google Plus, they call them circles. And let me explain how this works. We're diverse people. We have a number of different people in our lives. We may have friends, we may have acquaintances, we may have our BFFs, for the sake of argument, we may have diverse groups like our poker buddies, we may have um, uh, the spin class friends, whatever. We have, my point is, a ton of different people in our lives. And they can't all just be classified as friends and or followers. They really need their own designation and that's where Google Plus comes into play. When you come to Google Plus and you click on circles, you're going to be taken to a screen that may or may not have a whole bunch of people already here waiting for you. All right? There may or may not be these people waiting, depending on how you are invited and if you're on Gmail or not. These people get populated based on what Google knows about you. You can also use, uh, up here, you can also use Gmail or Hotmail to try to get some contacts into Google Plus to see who might already be there waiting for you. Once you have created the circles of people in your life, right, the circles to contain the people, and Google's going to start you off with a couple of basic ones so you don't have to start from scratch. Friends, family, acquaintances. However, not all family is created equal, am I right? There are some things you're going to tell Uncle Bob that you grew up with that you're not going to tell your mom. So while mom up here may move into the family circle, Uncle Bob may move into not only the family circle, but he also may move into your poker buddy circle, and so on and so on. People can appear in multiple circles because circles are how you're going to promote your shared information to these people. Okay, so once you started assigning people into your circles, you're now ready to start sharing information. So now you understand how circles work. And we have a very high budget here, so I'm using a washer I can erase this with. So, we've got circles. How do you share with the circles? In Google, they call it a stream. You may know it as a wall or a timeline. But right in the smack middle of the Google page is something called the stream. This is where your information that you've shared and other people's information who have shared with you appears. Now, this could be uh, a picture, it could be links, it could be text, right? In any event, the items that are shared appear in the stream. Now, the next question I get is, how do I use the stream? How do I share with the people that I care about? At the top of your stream is a share box. The share box is ready to let you put in pictures, links, and other such items. You can also share photo albums if you use Picasso Web, but that's a whole different story. So you type in the information you're interested in sharing. You share the link. You share the video. Now you've got a box down here that says, who do you want to share with? This is where the circles come into play. Clicking on this box will give you a drop down listing all of your circles and a couple of other different things like public. We're going to get to that in a minute. Select the circles you want to share with. They will appear here. Only those circles will see the information that you've shared. That way, if you went to a party last night and ended up face down in the gutter or running around with your underwear on your head, you don't necessarily have to share that with your coworker circle or your boss's circle or whoever the circles are you rather not see with your underwear on your head. All right. So, you share with only the circles that interest you, or that might be interested in your content. This is how you protect your privacy. If it's not public, or in a circle that 
people are in that you care about seeing the information or are concerned about seeing the information, they don't get it. That's how you protect your privacy in Google+. So once you've selected the circles, you may also want to CC a buddy, right? That's not somebody in some other diverse circle over here. Maybe they're in your, um, your poker buddy's uh, circle, but you only want them. You can just type in their name and it'll come out of the circle and you can share with just that person. It's perfect. So you can share with a circle, no circles, many circles, or individuals. And finally, you also have the option of public. And yes, my handwriting sucks. That's why I use a computer. So you also have a public selection for this. So if you choose to share publicly, anybody on Google Plus can see it. That's how sharing information works on Google Plus. It's very granular. You only share with the people you want to share with or that might be interested in the information. This is fantastic because your online persona is no longer limited to uh, just friends or just business associates like LinkedIn, right? You can use Google Plus to target anybody or everybody. It's great. Now, here's sort of the way to look at it. Google Plus can take the place of many different messaging services, right? If you send it to a single person, it's an email. If you send it to a business group, say your business to business circle, it becomes a company bulletin. If you send it to the people in your bridge club, now it's a newsletter. And if you send it to a group of people, like say the Monroe World Forum people, now it becomes a forum post. Finally, if you post it publicly, it's a blog. So all of the communication methods you're using can be all grouped together inside of Google+. I find that amazing and revolutionary, which is why I personally choose Google+, as my social networking site. There are other things, though, that Google+, offers you, using our handy-dandy wash rag. Google Plus also offers something called the Hangout. In your stream, you'll look on the side and it'll say, start a Hangout. What is a Hangout? A Hangout is a voice and video chat room. It's fantastic. All of the people, and this works just like sharing does with circles. When you start a Hangout, you'll have an opportunity to choose which circles that you want to bring in, or individuals. Want to have a business meeting? Choose your B2B circle. Want to have a meeting with your bridge club? Select your bridge club circle. In the person's stream that you invite, it'll come up and say, so-and-so is hanging out. You should join them. Click a button, and you're taken into a nice, cool screen that has a chat area over here, a giant video window to see who's talking, and then all of the participants' video windows down here. Whoever's talking gets the big window. You can, however, say, well, I don't want to see that person. I always want to be looking at that person. You have that option. And finally, if you guys want to get together and surf YouTube together, you can choose YouTube down here and then search for a YouTube topic and everybody in the channel, in the chat room, gets to see the video. You all watch it together. For collaboration, business to business, user groups, I mean, you name it, Google Hangout is fantastic. If you're using GoToMeeting or any of these other pay services to do your group conferencing, you can do it for free on Google+. Last but not least, one of the big questions I get is, what do I share? I'm on Google+, I got my friends, I got my family, I got my coworkers, I got my strip club whores. Oh, no, I didn't say that. I've got these people in my circles. What do I share with them? What, what do I do? I don't have anything to say. Google Plus has got you covered. On Google Plus, there's something called Sparks. Sparks is fantastic. It is a Google search engine that you type in a topic and it gives you a whole bunch of search results. Once you get the results that you like, 
You can actually save this query. Let's say you were searching for UFOs. You can save that query and use it again anytime you feel like it, which means every day when you go in to look at your Google Plus, you can jump in and look at the topics in Sparks on Google that interest you. Once you find a topic that you like, there's a share button. Click the share button, choose your circles, and now you have something witty and important to say even though you didn't come up with it, all you did was share it off of Sparks. Sparks is a great tool. A lot of people don't know about it. So, Google Plus offers you a multitude of services. It offers you real-time chatting. It offers you a search engine integration. And of course, it offers games. Now, there's really no point in going into the games piece here because everybody understands that. But hopefully now you understand how Google Plus works, how the circle system works, how to get people in and share with people. Remember, you have to exist in somebody else's circle before you'll see the information that they post to that circle. So remember, when somebody references you in a circle, put them in one of your circles. Even if it's just acquaintances, you can always move them later. If you have any questions, drop by the Monroe World Forums. One of us will surely help you out. This is Shane Armonroe with Review Lagoon saying, we'll see you next time.